I'd like to introduce you to our next panel. Um, we're talking about the frontiers, uh, the frontiers feminine, um, Shifai. And uh, my guests here uh, will elaborate on um, their experience before Shifai and during Shifai. Um, would you please introduce yourselves and um, also add in what area of the ecosystem you currently work in? Hi, uh, I'm Alicia Mall. Um, I am the co-founder of GivePact, a crypto philanthropy platform, and I was in cohort seven. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yeah. So my name's Vane, short for Vanessa. Um, I work at Edge and Node, I'm working for the graph, so an infrastructure where we index and query data, so organizing data of the blockchain. Um, and I was in the seventh um, season of cohort, too. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Laurel. I was in season eight of uh, Shifai, and I now work at Consensus as an internationalization project manager. Great, thank you. And I'm Susie Bat, and I was uh, cohort one. Um, and I also um, went back and revisited cohort, cohort nine, because um, I needed a refresher. Um, but um, tell me what your um, experience was before Shifi and why you decided to join. Okay, I'll go. So I joined um, really through Bitcoin and I wanted to join because of like the financial freedom aspect and the money. Um, but it felt very chaotic and I also came during the time of a bull market and it was just like, rocket emojis everywhere and I felt really confused, but it was kind of cool at the same time and the NFTs were booming. Um, but then I wanted a little bit more of organization and structure. I love to learn. And I felt like it was really hard to enter into a space that was like another language and very male dominated too. And um, that's why I came to Shifai because I wanted to feel like I could relate, that I could be, like that I didn't feel necessarily dumb really because that's sometimes the language that is used could feel Im intimidating really. Um, yeah, before I got interested in Web3 and blockchain and crypto, um, I was working here in Denver at an immigration nonprofit doing translation project management, um, which is a far cry from like being in the, the tech space in any regard. Um, and my partner was interested and continues to be interested in crypto and was talking a lot about it. Um, so I started to think about what the different use cases for blockchain are, especially in terms of the immigration space, um, thinking about having access to financial resources and financial institutions. Um, so I started to learn more about crypto um, and then found Shifi and decided that, you know, this more organized educational approach was what I needed to really understand what was going on because I felt similarly. Uh, there's a lot of emojis and new vocabulary and I, I felt lost. So um, it was really helpful to have like more of a structured kind of curriculum, if you will, uh, to learn about what, what's actually going on. Can I ask the audience, how many of you have gone through the cohorts? Oh, fabulous. Ooh. Maggie, are you looking at this? This is great. Um, and how many are, you, are new to Web3 um, in the last year? Great, okay, welcome. Um, could the panel please tell me um, perhaps tangible advice you have for those who are new to the space? test, test, community is everything. So often I say that, <laughs> test. So um, ETH Denver is rare in that it's a free conference, but if you go to consensus, those who can be in the space, it costs a lot of money um, and sponsorship. And I always say what's really happening are, 
is on the streets at these side events is where you meet communities. So education like Shifi, and then long term, you come for the education, but you really stay for the community. Um, so finding communities where you don't feel alone. And I think for me, Shifi has been part of my Web3 journey, Web3 Familia, um, and other spaces where I don't look unique, um, and I'm really part of a larger demographic trying to adopt blockchain. Yeah, and I, I think to add on to that, like, and Shifi does a good job of curating a space where you can play around, but the the point of all of this is for it to be accessible. Um, so I think that the best way to continue to learn is to like download the wallets, download the apps, get in the discords. It can become overwhelming, but the key is to kind of find your way into spaces that are interesting or where there's like jokes happening that you find interesting. I think that's a good way to like sense that you're in the right place. So just playing around, I think, is has been the most valuable thing for me. Yeah, I, I echoing really what bo you both have said. But one thing that I say is um, just reaching out to people. I feel like I did that because I thought something they posted was cool or what they shared. And I you do it genuinely, but then you never know also what it leads to. So just like being just just giving good feedback. People love to hear that about themselves. And um, it's really just cool to just share. And then you never know how it connects you. Hello. Could you um, please um, talk a little bit about what opportunities you feel are evolving or growing in Web3 for women? and maybe some skills that are transferable into the space. Um, you mentioned you came from um, uh, a, a immigration policy background. I mean, that seems like a very tangential leap into Web3, but um, obviously you landed really on your feet and with consensus, which is our me and Maggie's all alma mater, um, but I, you know, tell us a little bit how um, these opportunities, um, how you see these opportunities growing for women. Yeah, I'd be interested to, to hear this from both of you as well, but I think that as there become uh, more women in the space, it provides more entry points for other women into the space. So, um, for example, I was working as a translation project manager at my previous role, which was a nonprofit, um, and I didn't know that that role could translate into Web3 at all, um, but it does, because the way that we make this technology accessible is by making it available in other languages and to other regions of the world and making sure that it makes sense in the context of other people's realities. So I think that a key, I hope this is answering the question, but I think a key like um, note is just to figure out how the skills that you already have been developing and the things that you're already interested in can translate to this other space, because they absolutely do. It's just a matter of finding the people that know how or can help you figure out how. Um, I also come from the nonprofit space, so, you know, it's not that tangentially different. We believe that Web3 technology, I believe that nonprofits, those working at the center of crises, should have the best technology, and that's why I, I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, number one, I do see that many of the women who I've met in executive positions or mid-management have all graduated from Shifi, so step one, take that course. Um, Ma uh, we were, Maggie and I were, did an article for Coindesk and we talked, it was very much like women are building but they're not getting funding. So we are a growing demographic of shareholders. As our black and Latino people, it's, we're like 40% of the shareholders in the US, but as was mentioned before, we still get 2% of the pie. Um, so I think adoption is key and then taking leadership roles as founders and as, as executives is gonna be um, the role for us. I think it's so early that even if you're two years into crypto, you're still two years ahead of someone who has no idea what a Bitcoin um, is. So we're very early and I think right now it's about reading, writing, getting out to these events. I live in New York and try to go to at least one event a week um, to meet folks uh, and move and shake. So there's plenty of room for us. We are shareholders, um, we are investors, and um, let's, let's feel like we're just as tall as the tallest man in the room. 
where do you each get your Web3 intel? And don't just say crypto Twitter. Like, who do you, um, you know, what platforms, where are you um, trying out new uh, dApps? Um, who are you talking to? What are you hoping to get out of ETH Denver? And what are you excited to see there? Yeah, I'll go. So, um, there's a few people like Aubrey, Boys Club, Meltem. I love following them and kind of like go and see what they like, what tweets they like, and kind of go from there. Also, um, Tegan from Edge and Node as well. I love following her, and her content is also very relatable. Um, but Bulltide Bull as well, I follow their Substack and read because I, I feel like they provide really good information. So, I think those would be my go-to. Yeah, I also like um, the Boys Club podcast. I think they do a really good job of just staying up to date of what's happening in the crypto ecosystem. And I appreciate the just the like presentation of the information. Um, I spend a lot of time just Googling things that I'm interested in um, with Web3 afterwards and seeing what pops up. Um, and that's a good way just to get connected with projects or people who are writing about those things and um, yeah, just exploring different spaces. Uh, Next to NPR um, for global news, um, I like, where are you, mother? Um, what is it, the uh, Coindesk Market Watch? Is that right? Why aren't you coming up? Um, and they do like daily, bi-daily updates on the market, five or 10 minutes long. So I, re I listen to that every morning um, on top of NPR. Uh, Boys Club newsletter is great. Um, a little bit nerdier and long form podcast is, um, uh, what is it? Uh, border permissionless. Um, it's very male heavy, but they are at the forefront of uh, what's going on. Um, so that's another really wonky one uh, that I that I listen to. And um, GivePack does uh, newsletters every week at the intersection of uh, social impact and Web3. So would love to have you guys on. Um, I'll have to add Infinite Jungle. It just started. Um, Christine Kim from Galaxy um, breaks down all of the um, all core developer calls and into like things, words that you can actually understand and um, implement in, you know, your Google searches to like dig deeper. Um, but I want to hand off the mic to the audience uh, in the hopes that you have some questions um, for our panelists because uh, maybe in a, less than a year's time you will be on the stage talking about where you landed in your new Web3 role, um, and hopefully you'll bring five people behind you um, when you do make that step. So if you have a question or would like to share a story about how Shifi has supported you, um, we would love to hear it, and it will be more inspiring than you actually think because um, we're all uh, we all started somewhere and have found such value in this community um, that we're still here. Great, please. Thank, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I started investing in crypto. Test? Okay, perfect. So I started investing in crypto in 2016. I founded my um, woman project to onboard more women into crypto in 2020, which didn't go very well. I didn't learn, uh, I didn't know much about funding and, and so on, but it was a great learning experience. And through, you know, the, all this time I've been following Shifi, and I really liked how uh, Maggie breaks down concepts and, you know, she uh, does content online and teaches them. But I never did the actual um, course. So I was speaking with uh, Evelyn from Disco, and she was uh, telling me, you know, I would like to get some foundations, and she recommended me to the course. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So um, I am in a crypto space for a while, right? 
and uh, I, I keep seeing these issues in general with uh, steel, uh, with having uh, women in this space. And there are more educational platforms, but um, it's always difficult to stay updated, right? There is a, the, move, the, the, the space goes so fast. And especially when you hit niches like zero knowledge proof, it's so complicated and difficult. And you know, I don't have time to go really go deep into certain concepts because it will take forever. But how do you see this course to be able to also be um, uh, helpful for someone like me that it tries to kind of you know, understand more and fulfill those bases that perhaps I missed along the way that I need to review, but also that gives me a more um, maybe advanced um, knowledge into the crypto space that perhaps even helps me to fund my next project successfully. The question is, um, how will the course, how the cohort benefits your everyday work experience? Okay. Um, I often say that Maggie's course is like getting a PhD in crypto. I think it's for all, or blockchain, it's for all levels. And I think she allows people, you can be both a beginner and someone like you who wants to return. And also there's additional coursework. You do have to have the time for it. It's twice a week, right? Every week for a few weeks. So it, it requires a lot of time. Um, but I do absolutely think it's great for beginners and it can be great um, for, for someone like you. And like we're saying, we're returning. Um, and just, I said two incorrect things. The podcasts are Markets Daily and Bankless. Sorry about that. Yeah, and I'll just add, I think personally, I want to go again and, and go through the course just because there's always new things happening. And the way that we can, even going back to the basics is so important because I feel like we can ask those important questions that maybe um, we might not have thought when we first started. So I would say definitely do it again. Can I just add one more thing? Crypto is evolving. And if Maggie's not staying up to date, which I know she is, it doesn't mean anything. So we have to, the same way we update our, our, our iPhones all the time, she's updating content, staying relevant. She makes it fun and cultural. But if you're not up to date in crypto, you know, you're getting scammed. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all about practice. So get on testnet with us, practice. Um, we could. We did squad staking last cohort. Um, would I have ever done that? Do I know four people who would want to do squad staking with me? Well, in Shifai, I do. Um, so thank you for bringing that in. Um, one other question? I have a oh, question. Great. Oh, great. Um, so my question is uh, for all of you. Uh, I was part of Shifai season nine, and I thought it was really impactful. I studied computer science and never saw a teacher like Maggie, so it was really inspiring to see somebody that I can connect with and really learn from. And now I've been trying to like go into uh, Web3 roles, and it's really difficult for me to find exactly like a role that would fit what I've done. Like I've done uh, development, I've done project management, and it just, I feel like I can't find the right role. So how would you, uh, help somebody that wants to navigate that? Um, I would say uh, just contact people that are working at a company that you want to or that have a similar role. Um, because I think that every role in the space is flexible. Like there's not one thing that one person does. So this is an opportunity for you to also build your own role within that company and just show initiative. Or if there's something that you particularly like about the company, reach out to them and see, just provide value and you'll probably be able to find your way in that space. Um, and there's multiple, yeah, even I had you know if you want to chat with me, there's ways that you can definitely get in um, that are not in paper necessarily, but that will with value. Yeah, it's echoing what Vane said, but um, I think the talking to people in Shifai is key. Um, and something that I could have done a better job of was 
posting in the Discord of what I was looking for. Um, I think that just putting yourself out there in that way is really valuable um, because once I did that, I got responses and that started to move the needle more than like anything else that I had done. And I found that so many people within Shifi were not only willing, but like thrilled to help me find a role that fit the skills that I had from previously. So yeah, reach, reach out to us and send a message. And I would also add that start where you are. What projects are, animate you or what really um, brings you joy or lights you up whether it's a protocol or a DAP or someone who you admire and who you want to work for, start there. Work on you know your GitHub repo, um, if you're coding or your social media or trying out these Web3 DAPs and get yourself like really um, knowledgeable and see what you really what projects you want to work on, and then you just like stalk them at conferences. <laughs> uh, there was another hand. Yes, of course. Hi, it's just me. Uh, I just want to kind of, it's not really a question, it's that I would love. Uh, the myth is that like you could study enough to get to this point where all of a sudden you're an expert in crypto. I've been in the crypto space for seven years, since 2017, and I've known a lot of people in this space. You don't ever get to like a utopia spot where you know everything. You just get to be really passionate about something within the crypto space. And like, I would never want you to hold yourself back from moving forward because you think like you're supposed to get to this magic place that doesn't exist. So just move past that, move forward, and like attempt to go the direction you want to go, and then like keep learning. Great. Uh, it's almost like get out of your own way, right? Um, we'll wrap up unless there's um, another, yes, please, Layla. Okay, hi, I'm Layla, and I don't have a question necessarily, but just, you said a story or, um, or thoughts. So I loved what you all had to say, and it's so cool seeing where you're at, and I just just wanted to say it's really cool being in a space like this, um, like Shifi, and um, I contribute to Boys Club DAO, and um, like sometimes I think crypto is like so far ahead because it does try to be very diverse, but then I met a company last night where they said they have 30 people and they don't have any women. And we were like, what? And then that conversation ended quickly because it got really awkward. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it's just cool seeing like women here with, they saw two babies and like I can feel comfortable being like pregnant and having my third girl. And so it's like, yeah, I'm just getting emotional. <laughs> Uh, hormone. She fire. Yeah, yeah, future she fire. So it's just like, it's just really cool because I feel like all of us probably saw someone on the stage that represented us, and that's just like not the case all the time. So just more of a thank you. <laughs> that's a great note to end, and yeah. I want to thank panelists here for um, being part of the community and for contributing still and um, being friends. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And 